Hello, welcome to week 5. In week 5, we will be focusing on functions and how to create them in Python. Let's start with unit 1. Why are functions necessary? Most likely, you already know about functions from mathematics. In mathematics, a function is something that assigns for each element x an element y. I will give you a few concrete examples on the Jupyter Notebooks later on. The structure of functions in programming is quite similar, actually. A function has a name, as in mathematics. Usually, a function has some input, so the data that goes into the function. The function processes this input and creates, optionally, an output value. How this is done in Python? I'll show you also in our Jupyter Notebook. So why are functions necessary? The main reason why we create functions is to structure our programs. Programs tend to become quite huge quickly and using functions we can reuse existing program code and structure our program code so that we still can understand what a program is doing, also it's quite complex. And another feature is that we don't actually need to know how a function is implemented. Take, for example, the print function. You have used the print function quite a few times already in this course and never had to know how the print function is implemented. What is the difference for the print function running inside a Jupyter Notebook on a Mac or on a Windows PC? It doesn't matter to you. You can just reuse the function. So, again, it's showtime. We will jump over to our Jupyter Notebooks and have a look at functions in more details in the Jupyter Notebook. So, as mentioned before, you probably know about functions from mathematics. I have two examples of a function here. For example, this first function assigns x to uh, the square of x, so that's a quite common function. You might still remember from school or from introductionary courses at university. Another function, which I called s here, s from x and y assigns the sum of x and y to the input parameters x and y. And this is exactly similar to what functions look like in programming. In programming, a function will have a name, it will have input parameters, and it will yield some result. The main goal? as mentioned already when I showed you the slides, is to structure the program, to make a program more readable and to reuse code. This is quite abstract, so let's have a look at a concrete example. Here I have a little program code. In this program code we have a list of names and then we iterate through this list and for each name in the list we print hello followed by the name. Let's execute it and we see the result is hello Christian, hello Stefan, hello Lucas. What we do in this small program is that we use a predefined function print which originates from the Python standard library. And what this print is, it's a reusable function, so we can reuse it everywhere where we need to create some kind of output. And also, this print makes our programs more readable. Print is an English term you might understand directly when looking at it and see that what's happening at this particular line in the program is some kind of output. And because we don't care about the details, it's just one line, it's just print some output. So we know some output is created and we don't need to know what's happening in the background. So the complex logic that maybe is inside the print function is hidden from us. It doesn't really matter. In Python, there are two kinds of functions. There are predefined functions like the print functions and of course, we can also create our own functions in Python, and that's exactly what we will be focusing on this week. So let's start with creating an own function. How are functions in Python defined? 
I have a little example here. In this cell, we create a function named double, and this function double doubles the input value. How is this function defined? The definition starts by the keyword def, followed by the name of the function, in our case double, and then followed by an optional list of parameters. In this example, it's just one parameter x. After that is a column. This starts, as you know, a new block, and everything contained in this block is the function body, so that's the functionality the function offers. In this example, we see two things. Firstly, we see a doc string. A doc string is an optional documentation of the function. We'll see a little bit more detail about this later on. And we have a few, one or several instructions. In this case, it's just one extra instruction. And this instruction returns the result. Let's execute the cell. We don't see any output. What happened in the background is that this function is now defined. Once we have defined the function, we can invoke this function by simply calling it using its name. So, for example, I can now call the double function with a parameter 21 and print the result. Or I can call the double function with a string parameter and print the result as well. Let's see what the results are. The first result is 42. The second result is just the string hello repeated two times. So, after this example, here is again the, the syntax for defining functions in Python with all its elements. So we have the keyword def, we have the function name, we have the parameter list, we have an optional doc string, we have statements, and we have the optional output or return values. In this unit and in the following units, we will look at each and every of these parts of a function definition in more detail so that you get a solid understanding what functions are, what you can do with them, and what different options are available. Before we do this, let's first talk about function calls. What happens if we create a function and call it? Or actually, what happens if we call any function in Python? To show this, I have created here a really simple function. This function is called create. The function create takes a name and just returns a string, may the force be with you, followed by the name. So I can use this function now to, for example, create Luke or create Christian. Let's execute this and we get the result. May the force be with you, Luke, or may the force be with you, Christian. But what happens actually in the background once we call this function like here? So you can think of calling a function the way that the program stopped execution at the current position and continues the execution with a function. So what does it mean? I've tried to depict this with a little image or with a little graphic here. So once the program gets to the point create n, what will happen? The program will stop here and continue the execution with the function body. In this case, the value n is Luke, so the function is called using create Luke, and the parameter has the value that previously was stored in the variable n. Uh, so the, ver the, the, the value is passed into the function using the parameter. Inside the function, I can now reuse this parameter as a normal variable. I can use it, for example, to create a result. And that's what's happening here using the return statement. The return statement uses the result and hands it back over to this, the place in the program where the execution stopped. In this case, it was here. And though the result of the discrete function is assigned 
to the variable greeting. So after the invocation of the function create, greeting has the value may the force be with you look. And the same happens down here. Once I invoke or once we invoke in a program create Christian, create is invoked using Christian as a parameter. We can use this parameter inside the function. The result is created and returned back to the caller, which is this position in the program. Right now, the result isn't assigned to another variable, but instead handed over immediately to the print function. And now the print function is called. Yeah, and you could think of the same thing happening again. So over here might be the definition of the print function and the print function is now involved. This is not really technically what's happening in the Python interpreter. It's just you can think of it that way once you, when you try to understand what functions do. So in summary, whenever we use a function name in our program, the function is called. The program stops the execution at the current position. The function body is executed and the result is handed over to the program and the program continues after the function call. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to read. That's exactly what I've shown you down here. Um, if you have multiple function calls inside each other, um, the evaluation or the execution is from the inside out, but we will learn about this in an additional unit this week. So let's start with the first element of a function definition we haven't looked at, namely the doc string. What's the reason you can provide a documentation string together with a function definition? As mentioned before, the reason for functions is reusability. You want to reuse certain functionality over and over again, but this is only possible if you understand what this functionality, this function does. We will be creating really simple functions mainly in this course and you might be able to look at it and understand immediately what the functionality is. But as soon as you create more and more complex functions, it might be necessary to provide information to other programmers trying to reuse your function um, so that they understand what the function is actually doing. And that's exactly what the doc string is for. And although the doc string is nicely integrated in our Jupyter notebooks and the, and the Python environment. For example, if I try now to call the double function not using the parentheses like we did earlier, like for example so, but instead don't put parentheses but a question mark, I get down here an explanation what this function does. And here, as part of this documentation, you see the doc string. The doc string is that this function doubles the value. And this does not only work for functions we define ourselves. And printing the doc string is not only possible for functions that we defined ourselves, but it's also possible for functions from the standard Python library, for example, for the print function. If I execute the or if I call the print function with the, with the question mark, I get the doc string for the print function. It tells me what parameters are there, if it's optional or required parameters and so on. And that's quite similar to the documentation of the print function in the Python documentation. So you see, the doc string can be used to document what functions do. And you should start right from the beginning to use the doc string to document your functions. Um, otherwise, in large projects, you quickly won't remember anymore what different functions do. So it's a really useful tool for you to have. And the other thing you saw here, you can always access a doc string if you don't remember in detail what a certain function does. For example, also list, we can simply 
look up the doc string and learn more about it. So let's jump back to our slides. What have you learned in this unit? In this unit, you have learned why functions are required in programming. You have seen the basic structure of functions in Python, which elements are available. We have looked a little bit into detail how functions are defined and how functions are called. And in the end, we also analyzed the doc string. Thanks for watching and see you in one of the next units.